Hi everyone, this lesson is an introduction to functions. As you can see, functions do some stuff for us. Let's take a look. When we're declaring a function, we'll first use the function keyword, and then we'll give our function a name. The name you give your function should be appropriate for what it's doing. So in this case, I'm going to issue a welcome. So that's why my function is called welcome. Um, often they'll be called verbs because verbs are actions and functions are the same thing. They perform an action. So in this simple function, all we're doing is we're writing out hello mister. Um, down here is where we call the function. If I comment this out and I refresh, there's nothing. But if we take this out, here the function exists and here the function is getting called. Let's take a look and it outputs hello mister. Let's take a look at another function. This function is called welcome1 and the function is taking one parameter. This function didn't take any par parameters. So why, why do we need a parameter here? Well sometimes functions, or in order for them to do something for us, they need a little bit of information. And in this case, uh, this welcome one function, it needs this information. Okay, what's the greeting? So down here, I call this function and I pass in the parameter, which is a string of what's up. So this function's getting called, this is getting passed into here, then we're writing it out. Whatever I wrote here is going to go right here, and then we're going to concatenate on Mr. Let's take a look. And now instead of saying hello mister, it says what's up mister. So you can see I could have changed this to anything I could have I could have wrote um, I could have write how's it going. And that's gonna change. Okay, it's gonna update uh, with the parameter that's passed into it. Alright. Keep going. Uh, this next function is called welcome to and it takes two parameters so if your function takes more than one parameter we should separate it with a comma and this is the same sort of deal um, calling the function passing in this data passing in this data two things here two things here looks good let's take a look and now it says what's up Anthony okay you can see how that works uh, let's look at another function this function is called add very appropriately. It takes two it takes um it takes two parameters a and b and it now we're not going to write it out we're going to return it. Okay, let's take a look. So right now nothing will happen cuz we didn't call the function. Let's call it. So it's getting called right here and it's getting passed a 2 and a 3. And then because this function returns a value what we're going to do is we're going to run it, we're going to get it returned, then we're going to store that inside sum, and then we're going to write out sum. There's a 5. Now you might be wondering, um, you know, what was the point of this, to store it in here and then write it out? We could have just wrote it out in our function. Well, we're not always going to want to just output um, our stuff to the browser. Sometimes we're going to want to store it in a database or we're going to do uh, whatever with it. We're going to do an AJAX request with it. All right. So that's why sometimes we just want to return something and then we're going to store it or, or whatever. Okay. Here, a new variable sum2. Sum2 is set to the function of add and here we're passing in three parameters. Well, this doesn't, this doesn't look right because this function add to where is it? Uh, yeah, oh, sorry. The function add is only set up to take two parameters, but here we're passing in three parameters. And in some programming languages, this would cause an error, but in JavaScript, it doesn't cause an error. And what's going to happen is the function is going to take this two and three that it wants, and it's going to ignore this one. And we're going to see that the output exa is exactly the same. And there's five. Okay, so this just gets ignored in JavaScript. We could have put more, 56, okay, no difference. Next up is this function, add v2. Um, t 
taking two parameters. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out A, we're going to write out B, and then after that we're going to return A plus B. And here we are calling the function, but we're only passing it in one parameter. It needed two, we're only passing in one. And then we're doing a, we're doing a rule tag here, or HR tag. Let's take a look. And here it's telling us that A is two, B is undefined. And then here it's returning two plus undefined, whatever that does. Okay, so when we don't pass it enough parameters, the one that it needed will be set to undefined. And what that does to your function, I don't know. That could be good. It will probably be bad. Um, but this is, uh, you know, writing this, it shows us what it did. It makes B undefined. And let's do a little bit more with this. So here, um, what I'm doing remember that this function returns a value it return a plus b so here we're just um, we're writing that out okay let's see what happens there so what happens here is same as before it tells us what a is it tells us what b is but because this returns a value and then we're writing out that value here we saw that we get n a n which is not a number okay so as you can see in this case undefined uh, did bad things to our program. And, but we can also see that 2 plus undefined equals non number. All right. So down here, I want to talk to you about variable scope. Here we have a function called sum name. Um, we're setting a variable in it uh, called my name, and that's set to a string of Anthony. Then we're writing that out. Um, because I have the var keyword here, this my name right here is going to be local variable, if I can spell that. So local variable means this variable, my name, exists only within this function. It has local scope. And let's check it out. So that worked fine. Um, I'm calling some name. It's going up here. It's writing this. I'm telling it to we're setting the variable, we're writing it out, okay, no problem. But what if I do now what if I want to do this? Oops. Okay, can I write it out now? I have to you know we have this variable here, can I just write it out like normal? And nothing happens. We actually lost our HR tag because we have an error, I believe. Let's see what it says. Uncaught reference name, my name is not defined. Okay, so when we're outputting this, um, this doesn't even exist right now. It doesn't exist in the global scope. It only exists in the local scope of the function. And we even got an error in our script. If I remove this var keyword, now it's gonna create this variable in the, in the global scope. Let's take a look. Now we got two Anthony's and we got our HR and we and we have no more errors in this program. Okay, so that's the difference between um, between local and global scope. All right, let's um put our put our var back and that's uh, this is gonna be a local variable. Uh, let's look at some more stuff. Here now we're declaring this variable the name Bob. Okay, just a regular string we're setting up. This is a global variable, so it's going to be available to us everywhere in our program, including inside functions. This function, another name. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's see. Okay, so the name this the name is set to Bob. This is a global variable. Here we're setting it again inside the function. It's set to Bobby. And here we're calling the function. Let's see what that does. And we got an error. Let's see why we got an error. My name is not defined. Right? Oh, because of up here. So um let's uh let's comment this out. Alright, that was causing an error because remember we set it back to a local scope. 
Let's refresh, no more errors. And here we got the output of Bobby. So the name was set to Bob here, but inside the function, it was set to Bobby. So this is gonna this variable is gonna take precedence because it's inside the function. If we just comment this out, we're running the function, it's telling it to write out the name, let's see what happens now. And it outputs Bob. So this wasn't in the uh, local scope anymore. So what it did was we told it to write it out. It first looked in the global scope and it found it here and it output Bob. Okay, let me put that back. And uh, what am I doing here? Here, just writing out name is, okay, the name is Bobby, but if we put the var keyword in front and make this, and make this a local variable here, now when we write this out, this is gonna change to Bob, because now it's looking in the global scope, and that exists here. Keep going. Um, I want to talk a bit about nesting functions. So we can put a function inside of a function. Function hypotenuse takes two parameters a and b, and then the next thing it's going to do is well, basically there's a function that exists inside the function. So this is the function name. It takes two parameters. Inside of it is another function. And here we're going to return. Um, this is part of the uh, this is the math object in JavaScript, and this is a method of the math object. We haven't looked at uh, that stuff yet, um, but anyways, um, so so what are we doing here? Well, we need to run this square function on A, and where is it? And, and we need to run the square function on B too. Well, where is it going to find this? Well, this function is inside it's inside our function here so we're in all of this is inside the hypotenuse function we set up the function here and then we are running the function right here and right here so it's going to here it's getting the it's getting you know the information here and it's returning something plus returning something um, down here uh, we have this variable HYP is set to uh, hypotenuse function taking 4 and 3 as the parameters and then we're just writing out this variable let's see what happens and we get 5 okay hypotenuse of 4 and 3 is 5 uh, what's next here I create a function called triple it takes one parameter x and what it returns is three times x right so I just want to triple a number so I'm gonna go three multiply that number var1 is set to this function okay and then we're well here what we're doing is um, we're calling the function here and we're passing in the parameter of 4 writing it out okay and 12 so the reason I did this was just to show you guys something. So this variable here, var1, is being set to a function. So then you, what you know is this is a function now. So because this is a function, we can pass it a parameter, and it will do what it's supposed to do, which is return a value right here. So look closely at that, and um, try to make that try to have that make sense to you this is a function now this is this function so that means we can pass it a parameter it will do what it's supposed to do var2 is set to an unnamed function so this is the first time we're looking at unnamed functions it has no name but it still takes a parameter and it will return y times y this is uh, sorry a function literal is an expression that defines an unnamed function okay so this is a this is a function literal here uh, writing it out so var2 and we're passing it a 5 let's take a look 25 
Okay. Next one, function quadruple x return four times whatever uh, var a is set to quadruple five. All right. So or sorry, we're passing in. We're passing in. Uh, this is the quadruple function. We're passing in a five uh, because it returns four times x. That means a is going to be twenty now. Here b is set to quadruple. So if I just do this, b is set to quadruple. That means b is set to this quadruple function. And I'm actually going to just put a comment right here. So let's take a look at this. We're going to write out the type of quadruple, and then we're going to write out the type of b, and we're going to see if they're the same or not. And we see that they, they are. Quadruple is a function, and now b is a function. Now down here, var c is set to b, and we're passing it in a 10, right? Remember, b is the function now. We're passing in a 10. Now we're setting that to c. So that means if we write out c here, we're going to get 40. All right, thanks for listening.